Coach Ben here, and this is the Benchcast, and we're here with a melon in the middle. Melon, that's all I call her. That's all I really <laughs> give her. She's here with us today as our guest, and as always, Elvis over here at Small Arm Leg Strong. So this is the Benchcast, Melon. Why don't you go introduce yourself? What's your real name? So. <laughs> Uh, Betty Edge, I have to keep telling people who are new at the gym, he keeps calling me Melanie or Melon. Um, so people think that Mel is short for Melanie, it's actually Melissa. She thinks um, her name's Melissa. It's wrong. I'm pretty sure that's what my birth certificate says, but Betty says it's wrong. Type but up. everyone calls me Mel or Melon, so at this point I really don't respond to Melissa because my real name's Melanie, according to Betty. So. Her name's Melanie, and she goes by Melon. And uh, she just loves watermelons. How did that come about? What's so that with the <laughs> so stupid. Is that so I called you melon. You just rolled with it. So do you guys remember when Vine was a thing? I yeah. know Benny might be too old for that. For a little You're bit. like sixty, so you don't know. <laughs> but uh, Elvis knows. There was this Vine, and this guy would do all this stuff with these watermelon rinds, and he put them on his head, and he'd be like, "Water Malone," <laughs> and um, it was he'd have it on his head, and he'd be like. He has a helmet for his head, but I have a water Malone instead. And it was just dumb crap like that. And then I think one day it was either Grace or Vogues who was like, Water Malone! And then they started calling me Water Malone. And then Melon. You rolled with the water Yeah, and then I just stuck with the melon thing. I got a melon headband. And it's just. You can be addressed as just Water Malone. Yeah, I'm I'm the melon. That's it. That's how I was born. So, Melon here, she power loose at the gym. She uh, recently just did a multiply meet, hit a thousand pound total. That was pretty cool. That's got to feel good. And um, but she didn't start out as a powerlifter. She started out as one of those crossfitting types. One of them. One of those people that move around a lot and do a lot of things over their head. <laughs> that was weirdos. So <laughs> we're we're gonna talk to her a little bit about what she used to do at CrossFit, and then her transition over to powerlifting. How long ago did you start or were power or work crossfitting at the time? How long ago was that? Uh, well, I crossfitted, I think, for maybe three years before I went to powerlifting, and then my first year um, on the G team, I didn't crossfit at all. I didn't start crossfitting again until maybe like last summer. So I still work it in there. So I'm still one of those crossfitting types, but um, yeah, so for, it was a whole year where I didn't do it. For three years, and then you decided then to do powerlifting. Yeah. Why did you decide to do powerlifting? Well, I think it, I was kind of forced into it. Not gonna lie, I kept saying for a while that I wanted to do powerlifting and I wanted to focus on that. And then the gym that I was training at at the time closed, so that I kind of had a choice. I'm like, I can find another CrossFit gym, or I can stop running my mouth and saying like, oh, I want to do a meet, and then never do a meet, or I can like go to an actual powerlifting gym and do a meet. So I actually I had signed up for a meet. And I was like online trying to figure out, you know, how do you choose your attempts, just meet day prep stuff. I was going in blind. And then I found John's gym and I went to his gym the month before my meet. So my meet was in February and I went in January. So he kind of had four weeks. Yeah, he had four weeks to help me peak. It wasn't even peak. It was like, don't lift heavy anymore and we're going to figure out what we're going to do. And it went pretty well. I think I, I did pretty well for my first meet. But... Yeah, I just kind of jumped in and was like, screw it. It's either now or I know I'm probably never going to do it if I don't do it now. What intrigued you about the powerlifting? Um, if you look at my skill set that I was very good at in CrossFit, I gravitated a lot more towards the heavy stuff. The heavy shit. So, you know, if we, if we had wads where it was like, you know, really, really heavy barbell work, that's where I got, you know, I got ahead of people in those workouts. If it was like, you know, do a bunch of handstand push-ups, I was like, no, that's okay. So there was just, I was just naturally better at it. So I think you kind of gravitate towards the things you're good at as opposed to things that make you sure. feel like you suck. Would you say you were a good CrossFitter? Um, depends. Um, I definitely think that gymnastics um, is kind of the thorn in my side. I think I'm actually a better CrossFitter as a powerlifter than I was as a crossfitter, which is really bizarre, but I think being stronger has made things a lot easier. Like, body weight stuff has gotten easier. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I actually think I'm better now than I was when I was just crossfitting, which is the bizarrest thing ever. Well, that's interesting. Do you have any hopes to do a crossfit competition anytime soon? Getting ready for the Murphy? 
Oh, oh God. Murph? I'm terrible. I don't know what's that. I'm not good at following, but I hear the CrossFit Games are coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, I think regionals is either this week or next week, something like that. Um, when is that June? They do that in June. And then they have, yeah, the games I think is in July, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, they have all that going on. Um, so that's pretty cool to watch. They live stream that. I think the games are on ESPN. So I enjoy watching the CrossFit games. It's it's yeah. a good time, yeah. It's like a low key strongman event. They do a lot of crazy bullshit. I've seen uh, they, they what's one where they do a wheelbarrow type deal or no? Uh, I think they've done stuff like they've done a bunch of weird, weird, crazy stuff. Like one year it's they had like a guy. giant sandbag for like ten people. They called it the snake, I think, the snake or the worm, and it was literally for the teams. And it was a sandbag from like the end of the garage to there, and everyone had to like in unison squat it. It was like crazy stuff they throw at you. What I take is it's one dude, and he just finds all this random bullshit to do, <laughs> and then he puts it together and has people do it. They just is that correct? on the planet. I mean, that's I think that's roughly what it comes down to. Dave Castro is the meet, like the the director of the games, and he's kind of like a sadistic person. So that I think I think he just sits there with a notepad and is like, "How can I make people want to kill themselves? Let me jot that down." <laughs> because the things he comes out with is just mean. Well, it makes it very fun to watch. And what I like to see is the crossfitters struggle so much at powerlifts. Some of the deadlifts are real ugly once oh, yeah. you know what's yeah. actually going on. They, they it gets really uh you know you get concerned that they might <laughs> rip their back open, but so you went over to uh, powerlifting. You like that a lot more now, or what's the deal with that? Um, I like both. Um, you it's still definitely follow oh yeah, definitely. Um, I actually I did a I did a wad yesterday that had deadlifts in it. Um, there was rowing, burpee box jumps, and deadlifts, and uh, I'm actually a pretty decent rower just because I have strong ass legs. So um. That and the the deadlifts kind of let me get ahead of everybody, so it was like worked out in my favor. Oh yeah, I think compared to the average CrossFitter, um, I definitely have like, yeah. I tell some people in CrossFit gyms what my deadlift is, and it's funny because in a powerlifting circle, it's like, yeah, it's respectable, but it's not like, oh my god, you're the strongest person in the world level. But then you go to a CrossFit gym and you tell them your numbers, and they're like, what? Like you have to be like a world record holder or something. And I'm like, nah, I'm okay. So it's funny, it's two very different bubbles. 400 pounds is your max, right? Yeah. That's pretty damn good. And 397 squat, you're missing those three pounds. It's annoying. I don't know why John didn't let me put the pound and a half on each side. Yeah, just slap it's it like, on. why would you do that to me? Like, <laughs> and now it like, <laughs> eats away at me. It's like, come on yeah, now. She's scarred. But I'm going to say that the chalk buildup added a pound and a half on each side. Oh, just right. like from oh, the right. air. So it's really 400 pounds. So I think, I think it evened out and it's pound and a half on each side. Just Were the, the plates chalk. calibrated? Uh-uh. Mm, I don't think so. I oh, should have to, I'd have to watch the Instagram video. I don't know if we had the pretty plates yet. You could be 390 to 405. So, could about. go could go either way. I don't like calibrated plates. I'm very old school. I My plates are like off on one side. I definitely <laughs> know it. And I've had it before. I measured them out. One was 50 pounds. Oh, Jesus. I don't know how you could be that far off. It's five pounds off. That's a big deal. But I refuse to go to the calibrated plates. I just don't like it. Too old school. And there's nothing like the clang and the bang of the plates. It's my favorite sound ever. That and a baseball bat hitting a baseball. Best sounds in the whole world. I actually want to make a wind chime. That's just <laughs> plates dangling around hitting each other. No. Or those little mini bats. And I'm going to put a little baseball in the middle. And then just get that sound going. So you're also a personal trainer, Melon. So tell us a little bit about that. How did you get into that? I did some of that personal training stuff when I first moved down to New York. wasn't my cup of tea. You know, I, I enjoyed the people that I got to work with. A lot of older, um, I don't want to classify older ladies, but that was pretty much what I was working with, some, some beat up older women. It's usually what it is. <laughs> it's, you know, that's what you're getting usually. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really rewarding because they enjoyed it and they got a lot out of it. Like, it really improved their life. But the actual process of training is nothing like you're doing in a powerlifting oh, yeah. gym. wasn't my cup of tea. And then I ended up spending like 90% of the time on sitting down in the chair on the phone, making calls, trying to get people to come into the gym. was not my thing. How you handling that? And what, what people do you train? Yeah, so actually it's, it's funny, but my, my work has been all over the place the past couple of months. 
and I kind of experienced what you did where it was like, this is getting like, I can't do this anymore. It's getting really stupid. And <laughs> uh, I'm going to be completely honest, there was like, when I turn around and see what other trainers were doing, I'd be like, I'm held in the same regard as that guy who's making that lady do a one-legged squat on a BOSU ball. Like, what the hell? Like, this is, what is, what are you doing? Like, do you do that? No. Why are you making the 60-year-old lady with the busted hip do that? Like, you out of your mind? So, I, I got sick of it because it was all about sales. Um, the manager was actually, like, doing some really illegal contracty stuff on the side where he was like not the case yeah not halting accounts and taking money from people and then i had to deal with it so i was like this is dumb so i went back to coaching crossfit for a little bit um love it i love coaching crossfit uh i love the group setting were a CrossFit. oh yeah you so always, like, that's that's my that's my roots is the first you know gig i ever had in the fitness industry was a crossfit coach at the first gym i ever went to so that's always going to be like you know have a special place in my heart but the gym i was working at i definitely saw that there wasn't room for growth, you know, really well-run facility, um, but I knew that where I was working, I was going to be under someone else's shadow forever, and if I tried to step out of that, I was going to get, you know, crapped on. It was very, very, like, this is the way it's done, and no, don't think for yourself, you're wrong, and I'm like, all right, well, so then I, I found this other place in Farmingdale, it's a boot camp, so it's actually similar to CrossFit in that it's, it's they do have some dumbbell stuff, they have calisthenics, they have body weight, you know, um, cardio but there's no barbells so it's been really interesting because we have people from ages like 20 all the way up to I think maybe like mid 60s um and I've been doing a lot of their programming uh that's my main gig right now is uh their programming and coaching their classes I'm coaching like I think 30 of their classes a week now so it's like pretty full-time um very different than CrossFit or powerlifting but I think the appeal is that it's a lot more accessible I think for better or worse, for the average person, I think barbells are kind of scary. Like, it's like, I don't know what that is. I see yeah, really big see dudes. Yeah, so I think it's a lot more accessible. And at the end of the day, it might not be the kind of fitness that I choose to pursue, but the reason I got into it was I want people to live long and healthy lives, you know? Being unhealthy, not working out. My dad died when he was like 45 because he was morbidly obese and couch potato. Yeah. So, you know, if I couldn't, give people an avenue to not go down that route. Even if it's not what I personally choose to do, um, I'm happy there, you know, and the owners are great. The vibe is amazing. That's why my voice sounds this way, though. My voice is usually an <laughs> octave higher. Um, and now I sound like a boy going through puberty, but it's because I'm constantly screaming at people. But yeah, it's great. I love it. And I think the group dynamic, I like it way better than personal training. I was exactly what you said. I was ready yeah, to go tough. lie down in traffic doing it's personal training. It's a big money grab yeah. at the end of the day. It's unfortunate, but that's what it comes down to. But that's a good message, living a long, healthy life. You can definitely get behind that. And I think some powerlifters could definitely ease on the side of what you're doing at some of the boot camps because I know for myself, there's some times I'm walking up the stairs and I'm just having a hard time at the end of it trying to just, I'm huffing and puffing just trying to get some air. So uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts about how you know powerlifter can incorporate some of that stuff because I, I know I would go and do a few circuits here and there and um, just try to help my conditioner. But obviously you, you can think it's probably very important to get a lot of conditioning in as well, keep your heart healthy, all that. Because oh, you're not yeah. getting that much with powerlifting. Speaking of, uh, Tommy Matthews also wants to know. What, Tommy? What? <laughs> how do you manage both CrossFit and powerlifting recovery at the same time? Any suggestions for both? Um, sleep. high pain tolerance, no. Um, <laughs> uh, sleep. What is the question he's asking about? He, he, he basically asks, how do I not be a pussy? How do I juggle, I how do I juggle <laughs> both things? Um, it's a balancing act, so I'm not stupid about it. Like, if, like, Tuesday I had to find my five rep max bench, <laughs> but the wad, I go to CrossFit Garden City, was run a mile and then, then find your ten rep max bench press. So obviously... Those are kind of conflicting, and I'm not going to jump in on a wad that has... similar. Yeah, that's yep. absurd. So I'm not going to do that. Um, yesterday I did a, a deadlift wad, and today I deadlifted. So that's not the smartest idea to do all the time, but for me it was like deadlifts. It was less than 50% of my one rep, so I didn't view it as a real burner. I kind of viewed it as just you know something to move around with. But it's really looking at what is in the workouts, and are you hitting those muscle groups in a way that's gonna hinder your recovering from powerlifting? Like if I know I'm gonna max out my back squat 
And then, you know, that Sunday I'm doing Mannion, which is a hero wad that has an insane amount of back squats. You know, there's only so much of the same movement you can do where there is such a thing as too much volume. So I try to go, I take the rowing classes because there's no weights involved. Um, I try to do the wads that have more body weight stuff or lighter barbell stuff. Um, but I do have to cherry pick to an extent, which I guess makes it not real CrossFit because you're not supposed to do that in a way that's like against the definition of CrossFit. But I also know that's the only way I'm going to do it without overtraining. So it's just kind of, you know, if you go to a gym that gives you the wad the day of, picking and choosing and then you know if they have an open gym maybe you want to do the wad but you got to modify something go to the open gym and you know instead of doing the heavy back squats put in you know power cleans or a different movement that you know is going to hit somewhat of the same muscle groups but not in the same way and also make sure that you're eating enough um i was under eating yeah i was yeah. under eating for a while wait really long time and i think part of that is coming from the crossfit background of paleo um there was two things there was paleo and there was zone and paleo is really good about food quality, but not quantity. And they're like, starchy carbs are bad, and eat your kale. And I'm like, if I have one sweet potato a day, I'm gonna die. And if you look at, I follow RP Strength now. Um, hashtag plug, sponsor me, RP. Um, uh, it's, they have me eating so much more. And if you were to show that to someone who is maybe on zone or on paleo, they'd be like, that's way too much food. But you got to listen to your body and not follow some arbitrary diet that your box might be prescribing. Definitely take that into your own hands. Templates. RP? RP? Yes. Oh, God. Yep. I'm like Everyone's religious about ass. RP. Yeah. There's what's, so, what's they're so a, good. What, what the hell is that all about? There's different levels or something. I, had, I was training this CrossFit. Uh, he actually owns a, a CrossFit. So he's an owner there um, at Mount Sinai out east. Mm -hmm. Sean. And. And he, I forget exactly what weight. I think he was like one, around 180s or, I'm sorry, 160, something like that. And he started doing this RP template thing. And then all of a sudden, the next meet I saw him, because I saw him at, at the first meet we did when he was around 160s. And then I see him the next meet we did out in February. It was about four or five months apart. He was just completely veiny. He was shredded. Oh, I remember I that like, dude. Yeah, 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 I saw the photo. That was ridiculous. Yeah, the, he was like stage between. ready. That was that's crazy. Yeah, it got freaking weird, and I didn't know. Like he just he dieted down that whole time, and it just worked. I kept checking in with him, and, and he said it was going great. He made weigh-ins no problem, but he got shredded. And I was just seeing everyone losing weight. What's that all about? There's like levels two. Yeah, so they have um, they have. Their templates, so what is, they have one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, but I really like their templates because if you don't want to pay for the one-on-one -on -one coaching or I'm the kind of person where if I make a decision to do something, I don't need that one-on-one -on -one accountability. So it's good that I don't have to pay. It's, it's a little on the pricier end. If you need it, it's worth it, obviously, but um, you choose if you want to cut or bulk. And each template comes with either a cutting and a maintenance template or a bulking and maintenance template. You put in uh, your weight, um, your gender and then they send you a template based off that and what's really cool is they're very big on nutrient timing so my macros on a heavy day and they'll give you you know their definitions of what constitutes a heavy a medium and a light day so you kind of know what you should be eating you know my macros on a heavy day where I train first thing in the morning might look a little different than my heavy day where I train after like three meals. So you're eating to fuel what you're doing. Exactly, get. yeah, they move, they move, and mainly the biggest difference is how they structure the carbs, but their emphasis is putting the carbs around your workout when your body needs it. Um, and I found that that was like a big thing. And then um, they're very big on intro workout nutrition, not so much that post-workout shake, but that post-workout shake, you should be, yeah, you should be having it in the middle of your workout. Um, and that was like a big game changer because I'd start to drag in the middle of it, especially those longer high volume days. I'd feel like ass like halfway through. And when you have that in there, it's got carbs and protein in there. So good. It you helps so much. You take me back. You're taking me back down memory road. When I was, I used to get hardcore into the dieting stuff and I would train and I'd feel like really burnt out near the end of a workout. And then I had this intra workout shit. Um, I think it was. I don't, it was some kind of juice. It was I don't know. It was uh, Sounds like sketchy. orange juice or something. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. I don't know what it is. It's my special juice. It. So I had that and and I would drink that. I think it was protein in it too. And man, the difference was unreal. And I'm thinking back on that now, and I don't know what got me away from that. 
But I think that's definitely something I'm going to start doing because I like to start to drag ass at the end of a workout, especially if it's a hard one. Yep. Yeah. And I remember how much that really made a difference. So that's something I'm actually going to throw in my training. That's a good one. We got uh, two questions, one quick, one long. One of them is uh, who sets up the Renaissance periodization stuff? Like oh, Juggernaut? So Oh, so actually, that's interesting. Juggernaut and RP are two different companies. So, uh, RP is owned by Nick Shaw, and Juggernaut is owned by uh, Chad Wesley Smith. That's his brand. Um, a lot of Chad Wesley Smith's athletes are on RP. So, if you go on his website, um, RP templates are for sale there, and they work a lot. But they're actually two different companies. Um, I don't think there's any involvement of Juggernaut in terms of setting up the templates. Um, from my understanding, they're kind of automated. There's a formula that once you send their info, they send you out the automated templates, which is kind of why they're less optimal than the one-on-one -on -one because if you work with one of the trainers one-on-one, -on -one, they can tweak it a little bit. With the automated templates, they are what they are. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's, they're, they work a lot together, but they're two different companies from what I understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Uh, you can get, with, tell a little bit about Renaissance periodization. That's the RP. Yep. Yep. All right. And then so uh, everyone knows where to find it because they work really yeah. well. I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> their their Instagram is RP Strength, and there's very few times like I get religious about like a meal plan. I'm always like, you know, eat however you want to eat, whatever works for you. Like, no, get on RP because that's gonna work for you. It's I tried so I was my first meet that I did ever. I weighed in at I maxed out. I was in USAPL, so we were in kilograms, and I maxed out the 82 kilogram weight class, and I was at like 184 point something. Um, I weighed in today like 168, and I'm way stronger than I was for my first meet. So it's insane. You get stronger and you lean out. It's yeah, you've been the dream. Yep. It's amazing. And another one from Rob Mantavini. Off-season conditioning and strongman for powerlifters. What do you guys think about that combo? I like the strongman stuff. Yeah, I think um, with any conditioning, you have to monitor the recovery that goes along with it, especially, you know, what type of conditioning you're doing, if it's real high intensity, such as a uh, really heavy farmer's walk, or if you're doing those yoke walks, that's a lot on your back. You know, if you're, you're weighting that thing up, it's a lot on your back. And it doesn't, you know, once you go into a squat, if you've been doing a lot of heavy yoke walks, you know, that's going to hinder your recovery. So just finding that balance of what you are doing compared to what you're doing and you're lifting. Um, but strongman, I think there's a lot of good components of strongman that can help in powerlifting a ton. I know with Rob, he's doing um, the stone the stone loads. Oh, of okay. those. It's really, it's just like a deadlift. You're hitting a lot of your posterior chain. You're getting a lot of quality back work in, and it, it translates really well over. Um, and likewise, getting strong in powerlifting translates over to your strongman stuff. But how you, what what's some good moves in CrossFit you think that too that you can do that will help you out with your powerlifting? Kettlebell um, swings. Kettlebell swings actually, and and make you know assuming you're doing them right. I I was actually who was I telling you about this? I was, no, yep. maybe Jim. I don't know. But there's um there's a girl who I used to train at my old gym at, and now she goes to the Garden City gym at. She only does Olympic weightlifting, and her deadlift is on par with mine. So, and all she does is the Olympic lifting. So she's doing, think of it like our speed work, lighter weight, but really explosively. Um, so I definitely think there is some carryover where even if you're not going heavy, if you're going really explosively, that builds strength as well. So she'd probably get the benefits of the power development. Oh, definitely, which is helping yeah. Her out. So Absolutely. That's, that's good too, is a lot of times when you're doing volume work, power lifting, you're not really getting that speed component. Yeah. And with something like Olympic lifting, it's it's 100% explosive. You can't be slow in that because you got to move your body around the weight and yeah. catch it and do all that. So that's a very explosive movement, and, and things like that are going to build up that power development and translate very good to your power lifting because part of it is being strong, part of it is being explosive while being strong. So uh, definitely, definitely good carry over there. I would definitely just add in farmer's carries. Yeah, yep. that's great. Farmer, you can't go wrong with farmers wrong. carries. Uh, they're Hard just to such, mess them up. Such a yep. great, you know, it's such you have to a basic try to mess thing. Those up. Pick heavy shit up and walk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but man, the benefits of it, it's awesome. Awesome. I should do more of those too myself. And you feel pretty badass doing it. Yep, so yeah. There's that. Yep. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. I remember Stan Efferding came to the gym, and he put the bumper plates on 
the uh, the barbells. He was walking with barbells. What? Him and Larry, they loaded that <laughs> shit up. Um, but damn, they they scratched all the damn bumper plates. <laughs> <laughs> but they were killing it in the parking lot, and they loaded up barbells. We're talking a bunch of plates on each side. So I guess if you don't have farmers' handles. Then that's one way to do it, but that's a balancing act in itself. Yep, yep. All right, so why don't we talk a little bit about uh, your transition over to multiply lifting? Because you were a raw lifter when you started out. When yep. you first came in, you were doing the raw lifting. That was your first meet. I don't think you even did like a rap meet. You just kind of went right into it, which I'm a fan of. You know, a lot of people are on the side of add stuff in slowly, add knee wraps, do that, add a little, a little bit of this and that. I say just, you know, just do it and learn it because at the end of the day, you're still going to be the same learning curve to me. You know, I don't think because you wear the knee wraps that it's, it's, you have that idea of what they feel like and you know how to go about getting them wrapped and, and the difference in the squatting styles. But at the end of the day, you know, back in the day it was all multiply and people just got in and, and did it. So you, that's kind of what you did. You took that route. Granted, you didn't have a full suit. You had briefs on. Yeah. And you actually did your meet in briefs. Yep. I don't even think you used your suit yet. No, no. I it's I just got it. It's sitting in my bedroom staring at me waiting to be broken in. You I haven't used it yet. the Inzer. The I got the Leviathan the Pro. Ultra Pro long ass high tech name. The highest level one that they got have. Got the bonded With the lace. All out. You <laughs> With the BDSM cut. stuff on the side. Yep. So you got that. You didn't even use that yet. Nope. But you did a thousand pound total. Your last meet. It was your first multiply yeah, meet. Yeah. Yeah. First full multiply meet. Just in briefs, which was really impressive. And you did do the shirt, so you yeah. you're familiar with the shirt. But talk about that transition. You were raw, jumping into all this stuff off the bat. How was your first experience in the shirt? That must have been pretty wild. It was so cool. Like, I was at a point... And you were good at it, too. You just... Like, some people, it clicks. Other people, very, very long learning curve. Yeah. But that's just how it is. Some people have trouble, and some people are just already kind of doing that form with the raw stuff. Yeah. And I'd say that was more you. Yeah, you I think so. You already had that kind yeah. of groove in place. So I think it, it clicked a lot easier than, than raw benching ever has, honestly. Like, yeah. for some reason, which is bizarre, because I've done raw benching way longer. But... It's just that movement pattern was seems already a lot in place. easier and to I me. I remember yeah. um, Ken from the gym. Uh, he does the accounting stuff now. And every morning I'd be like, man, Ken, you know, the way you're squat, you'd be so good in a suit. And I would just egg him on every time. Because he was already set up pretty wide. And he had no uh, flexion in his knees. Like, his knees weren't coming forward at all. And uh, he just sat back. He would open up so well. And I knew it wasn't really yielding his best raw squat because yeah. he could have got a lot more out of his quads. But, man, if he threw a suit on, he'd be something special. And I stand by that. He should get in a suit <laughs> if he hears this. But, yeah, tag him in there. How, make sure he sees his video. On you. Yeah, make sure he gets tagging here. Damn it, Ken, get in a suit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you transitioned really well. It was easy for you. What about the squats? Uh, so it's really funny because raw squats have always been, like, the bane of my existence. I... If you can ask anyone, if I could eliminate one lift from the sport of powerlifting, it would be the squat. Um, but for some odd reason, squatting in, in the briefs was just more innate. Like, I think part of it was that it was, it's obviously slowed down a lot. You're not going at the same pace, so it kind of gives my brain more time to think, all right, you know, don't let my chest go forward, drive those knees out more, Get sit back feedback. more. Yeah, and I, you know, the, the briefs... Even though they feel like they're trying to crush me and kill me at the bottom of the squat, they also kind of give me that feedback where I have something to push out against. If I'm squatting raw, you can tell me to drive my knees out, but it's helpful to have something to drive out against, you know what I mean? Yep. So I feel like my form is actually a lot better in equipment, which is bizarre because it's almost kind of working against you where it wants to crumple you. Yeah. But I feel like it's a lot more on point when I'm in the briefs. So I think my, my equipped squat is way prettier to look at and way more efficient than raw because raw it's gotten better actually i think because i handled heavier weight in the equipment so my upper back got a lot stronger but my raw back squat when i get heavy it turns into a good morning i kind of just crumple coming up Mm -hmm. it's pretty bad i know what's interesting too i see with raw lift is if you're a tight person you actually end up learning that a little bit better the form because i think you just have it's almost like having an artificial squat suit on you 
because you're already so tight so you are kind of getting a little bit of that feedback yeah whereas someone that you know practices yoga or something uh comes in super flexible they have a harder time not that they can't get it down but people that are very very flexible they have a hard time like they'll hit ass the grass and sometimes they don't even know it you know that's just what they're doing because they're tight in the bottom and they're just kind of rebounding out of that spot but that's interesting to see uh, it's just even for someone that tight doing a raw squat it's a lot easier for them to have that feedback as well so it's almost like wearing a suit but how'd it feel first time you were in all this stuff? The pressure's unreal. It's got to be a lot different than the raw one. Oh, yeah. I yeah. remember when I got in the shirt for the first time, I always felt like a super pussy because I couldn't <laughs> hold my breath. And that's what I tell people now, too, is they, they tell me, I don't think I can hold my breath that long. If we're doing five-count pauses, I don't know if I can hold my breath that long. I'm like, it's a very trainable trait. I did yeah. it, too. I pretty much told myself, don't be a pussy. <laughs> but... Also, too, it is it is trainable, and you do have to go through it for a little bit. So, while I, I sympathize with that too, I know that you can eventually get to that point where you can hold your breath in the shirt, and because once you breathe in the shirt, it's over. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. You know, if you're trying to breathe under, like all really that over, weight, like you die. Yeah, you're not getting that lift probably. If you do, it's a miracle. But that's a trainable trait. The pressure's not real. Um, it's just a totally different thing to get used to. I remember starting out single ply. I was just getting cut up in the triceps. I was bleeding. Uh, it's very different. Everyone's asking me, what the hell are you doing to yourself? And I'd be like, don't worry about okay. it. Just come to my basement. I forgot the safe word. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that like for you? Um, it was. I had no idea what to expect because I understood the concept. So I was naively thinking something along the lines of like just a really heavy duty slingshot. Yeah, like a slingshot. Yeah, I wasn't anticipating it feeling like, you know, Elvis was sitting on my chest trying to choke <laughs> me out as I was benching. It's really different because I don't feel like I'm going to die when I'm in the slingshot. And then in in the shirt, like right before I touch, it's like, oh, oh no, I'm blacking out, blacking out, please yeah. let me let me lift it up, please, I'm going to die. Oh, thank God. So like it's this moment of like you're really you're pushing it to the point of you feel almost a little lightheaded at the bottom, mm-hmm. um, and you definitely you don't feel that with a slingshot. Obviously, you never feel that raw benching because it's it's lightheadedness, but it's it's like full body compression. It's really weird, very yeah. different. Yeah, everyone thinks it feels like a slingshot. Yeah, it's nothing not, like, nothing a slingshot. like a slingshot. But they have the Titan Magnum <laughs> Ram now, and man, that thing I wore it was loose. Uh, that thing feels like a single ply shirt. Really? That's taking like that thick black band mm-hmm. or that even that Godzilla band and they just pretty much strapped it up and you're just taking that thing for a ride. And that yep. felt like a single ply shirt. That was pretty aggressive. So that's an interesting tool if you're you know, practicing your shirt to groove and whatnot. Now, the thing I think people struggle with the most in the shirt is right what you said about at the bottom portion of that trying to touch. You get down, you, you know, you're coming down, you're coming down. Depending on how tight your shirt is, you're going to meet a lot of resistance at the bottom. And a lot of people start to really panic there. You know, they're running out of air. Uh, they feel like they might pass out. It's a lot of pressure. Uh, it's people who can fight through that and maintain the position because anyone can keep good position for the first half of it. But once you get to that bottom, you know, you're coming down, coming down, meeting resistance, and then those elbows start to swing out on you, and people don't touch it because they just want to get rid of that bar. So they're finding the easiest way to touch with it. And that's not how you want to approach it. You just got to fight through that resistance, keep your position in the bottom. That's probably the hardest part of shirt benching, and that's where I see most people failing is they want to get rid of that bar real quick so they don't touch it. But you handled it really well. Yeah, your first... Well, you had one incident. <laughs> the, the, one incident. You the had major that, incident. That It wasn't major. Lou, Lou came out of nowhere. And yeah, he, lightning but reflexes. Usually what you get is a welcome to the club moment, yep. and Mel got that at one of the meets. That she That was probably your first, I guess, multi-plot. Yeah, it yeah, it was only, a though. bench only one. Yeah, and she uh, she touched the weight. I don't even remember. I think he just threw it back too soon. It was weird on the way Ooh, down. No, that way. It came rocking in towards Craig face. towards me. Yeah, you know, I was judging. I was real relaxed and poised. I knew someone was going to save her, but it probably wasn't going to be me at the time. It's like, uh, too far. <laughs> Sorry. But well, Louie, out of nowhere, Louie comes flying through. Swooped in. And he grabs it. I don't even know how he grabbed it, but he had it, and uh, you were saved that day. We, we have two rules. Nobody dies, and if anything happens, we get it on camera. That's right. So. Yep. Yeah, it's like when Louie ripped the bench pad off. Oh, that, that was mini great. Viral. That was mini-viral. 
And he made someone made a good compilation video for you of that moment. Yeah, yeah. Was that yeah. you, Elvis? That was, that was yeah. me. That was the right, yeah. expert was Elvis great. put that together. The moment Mel saw that bar skyrocketing towards her face, and that was the first time you ever had that happen to you, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That was the first. So you know, you have zero control. That bar. Oh just, no! It's it was, and it was so it was weird. Like it took a moment to process the fact because I was kind of like, I was in this position. I'm still trying to push. And then it took a moment for me to realize I'm not in control of the barbell anymore. And then suddenly it was here, and then suddenly Lou had it. And it, it just happened so fast. It happened quick. It was insane, yeah. So fast, the way it all went south. Like, really, really quick. <laughs> uh, my first uh, single-ply meet was my first bench meet, too. I was coming down with the weight. And, man, the first two, the groove was a little off, right? And I, I was lucky to get it finished at the top. But this one, I was like, I'm just going to keep in position real well. And I was nailing it. I felt like something great was going to happen. It was just going to spring off the chest. It was just a perfect groove. And then all of a sudden, you wouldn't really expect this either, but just the whole shirt just rips right down the middle. And that weight quickly just oh, fell into God. my chest. Luckily, I have a big arch, so I had some give to it. But they caught it pretty quick, and I ended up being all right. But I had this red mark, and then right before that, it was like two weeks before that, um, when the guys know was saying how it was a YouTube vid and this, this guy actually died because he dropped 400 pounds raw. I think I saw that YouTube video. Above. Yeah, and it like yeah, cracked and he something. Was fine. I think it punctured his lung. Yeah, right? he was fine. And then like an hour later, I guess he died. Yeah. So I was like, well, shit. Am I <laughs> you probably die go to the doctor. Am I bleeding out? So I don't know. So I, uh, you know, I was there with the Gorilla Pack guys. Love those guys. And Rich Putnam brings over a, a Overkill shirt, and they're just like, hey, take this and go for a ride. And I was gonna do it, but. And I was like, well, shit, I better go to hospital before I die. So I'll be, <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> so my friend took me over to the hospital, and uh, I ended up being all right, did all the x-rays and shit, and then, uh, you know, they, they yanked me for money, and then I'm out the door. And I go grab my award. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, you definitely get those scary moments in the multiply game. You don't get that raw. No, definitely not. It doesn't happen raw. Like, at the, it's funny because I was always a little, like, I think, just naturally any person has a little apprehension holding weight over their face and now like I when I hit that five rep max attempt the other day I kind of knew I was gonna fail that last rep but there was zero fear there because I'm like listen if if 275 didn't take me out like this weight isn't gonna take it's fine I can drop it on myself and I'd probably be like my face could probably handle yeah. it like it's okay so like your perspective changes even like in raw squatting um you know, there was that apprehension having weight on my back, even with spotters, am I able to get back up? And now it's like, this isn't, even if I get stuck down there, I'm just not going to kill me, so it's fine. Yeah. Like, you're a lot more relaxed about failing. I and mean, you have that control still. Yeah. You know, with the raw, you have that control, whereas the suit, you're handling more weight than you ever could raw, so if something goes wrong, you're just going with it. It was nice knowing you. Yeah, that's right. So, we're about to wrap it up soon. We got any questions coming in? Yeah, I think we answered them all. All right. Yeah. So why don't you uh, tell us some of your goals for the future? So you just did this thousand pound multiply meet. You know, usually a lot of people are fighting for the Arnie, the qualifier there. Do you have any hopes to do the Arnie raw, or do you want to do that multiply? What's the deal? What's up next? Uh, I think multiply would be really cool. Um, you want multiply again next? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to do maybe another cycle raw, um, just for my own benefit. Um, especially I want to get used to being a little lighter than I was. Um, I weighed in like 168 today, so I'm basically in the 165 weight class now. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like I'm moving different, like my leverage is a little different, especially in bench press. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of want more time to acclimate to that. But I would like to get back into the suit, and I think the Arnie would be a cool, pretty cool goal to shoot for. That's smart, though. You're trying to bring up your geared stuff through your raw work. Yeah, well, definitely. I feel I like if I have that base... Yes. It'll be a little easier. Yeah, that's pretty much my philosophy in the shirt. Get strong raw because you're only going to get a certain amount of the shirt. When you're in the shirt, it's technique practice. Yeah. You know, you're not really necessarily getting stronger for the shirt in the shirt. It's more or less technique practice, how much you can get out of the shirt, and then getting strong raw is where you're making those gains. So continue to get strong raw, translate that over, practice the technique in the gear, and then you'll be better off for it than if you're always just constantly training gear and overloading yourself. Yeah. So, real smart way to go about it. So hopefully we see you, Arnie, 2019. That's the goal. Do you have any uh, weird lifting bullshit that you do? Uh, I was trying to think about it, and I think 
The only weird thing I kind of do is I'm very fidgety with my hands. Like, if I'm setting up... With deadlifts, it's weird. You'd think with deadlifts, you'd be a little more, like, particular about your grip, but I'm not. But if I'm going to squat or if I'm going to bench, if the bar isn't sitting on my calluses in a certain way... I think you can see one of my <laughs> Instagram videos. I'm set up, and then I stop, and I do something weird with my hand, and then it's like, okay, now I'm good to go. Like, it has to be a very specific way on the meat in my hand and I can't even describe to you why because it literally makes no difference but I'll sit there rolling back and forth until it's like okay my calluses feel like they're in the right spot and then I'll go into the lift which is kind of weird and then I'm constantly chalking up in between my fingers just because I'm always sweating constantly yeah, so I'm trying to like absorb bar. yeah just yeah. try to get rid of that moisture do you have any weird meat day stuff I know for me I gotta wear the different colored socks I gotta the last time I dyed my beard was just pretty that wild. was awesome I got the whole gimmick the bandana the eye black the beard uh mouth guard the fangs you got anything going on you got uh, the headband the I got yeah things, so I got the watermelon the headband gimmick. yeah yeah um I think the only weird thing I have is just the morning ritual I give myself an extra hour to take my morning poop because I'm nervous, right. but I know I gotta time. take my morning poop, so I just give myself more time to do it. We just had the FedEx man pull up, so maybe we can get him on the bench cast. <laughs> I don't know what he's delivering. I think this might be some big benches, wrist straps, and elbow sleeves. <laughs> oh shit! How you doing? This wasn't even planned. Oh no, he's not gonna bring it in. Oh, how you doing? Damn you! Okay, so bye. We just got, um, Can't even get him we just got a drop off, and I'm not <laughs> sure what we got dropped off, but I'm hoping it's some big benches shit. So I guess we'll see. But that's a good spot to end it. All right. I also like the melon. Um, you got the melon mouth guard. Yeah. That's oh pretty, yeah, that's yeah. Pretty awesome. I have a watermelon mouth guard. Yeah. Yep. So I don't bite my tongue off gimmick. when I'm benching in the shirt. Mm -hmm. And on that note, just want to give them uh, where to follow you. Your Instagram, any oh, social media or anything? Before yeah, we go? Exploding Llama 342. What's up with that? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I, needed, I needed a username in high school. I was in AP Bio, and we had to have a, a science related blog, and we needed a username. And I'm like, I need something really weird and random because everything I put in was like, this username is already taken. And I'm like, are you kidding me? How many M. Granatoses are there in the world? Like, you're say saying there's like that many people with my last name in the system? Like, yeah, no. Bullshit. Yeah, it was getting dumb. And then I put like random digits and steel and apostrophes and exclamation marks. And I'm like, this is getting dumb. So I'm like, what's something super random? And I looked over at a poster and it was like a chemistry thing and there was like a little lab explosion, like, animation and then I'm like okay exploding what else what do I like I like llamas exploding <laughs> llamas wait it needs numbers okay uh 342 exploding llama 342 and then it let me go to the next step and I'm like yes I got a username and then I just kept it so that's just your thing now. yeah mystery solved yeah. Exploding llama, it's literally there's literally no special meaning behind <laughs> it it was just the only available username I could think of all right guys we'll check out exploding llama 342 then while you're doing that, you can go over to Small Arm Leg Strong, see what Elvis is up to. You don't post too often. Do I gotta Elvis? post some more shit. Yeah, He's gotta post some more come shit. On. His is pretty boring. But <laughs> you can come over to At Big Benches. You probably already are because you're watching the feed. But if you're listening, you didn't do that yet. You can follow me personally at Bench and Benny. Also, too, we're got our uh, mic stationed up on some bench blocks. Use your code Big Benches Ten on BenchBlocks.com. You can get ten percent off your order there. And as well, make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube. All right, and uh, all that good stuff. Give the the um, podcast a five star review if you do. Uh, you send me a screenshot that you did. Then uh, we will send you out a team lanyard. And guys, this isn't any team <laughs> lanyard. All right, this has the breakaway back to it, all right? So if you're in trouble, your lanyard gets caught. That thing's snapping off your neck, and your neck is intact, all right? You got the detachable neck. So, guys, you can detach that neck. Elvis, you use that feature all the time. All the time. And then at the end, you have the clip, but the clip's not only a clip. It's also a bottle opener. So Whoa. you're at a party. Hey, guys, you got a bottle opener? Oh. And I got my lanyard, my Big Benches lanyard. Big I'll pop Benches my own bottle. follows me at every party I go to. Yeah, so get yours by five-star review I'm imagining on Benny the outside the window looking at you. What <laughs> is he sure doing in do there? It. Make sure you do it. It's about right. <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate you watching. This is Ben. The Benchcast. Later, guys.
Bye.